Chandra Natsalansi here for Woodworkers Journal Magazine. If there were a competition held today to try to figure out the most versatile machine in a wood shop, it would certainly come down to the table saw versus the band saw. I mean, both are amazing machines, right? However, my money would go to the bandsaw in terms of winning that competition. For the simple reason that a bandsaw can handle practically all the same cuts you can do on a table saw, right? Resawing, ripping, cross-cutting, some joinery work. However, a bandsaw has a much greater depth of cut, which is just generally terrific to have in the shop. However, it's essential for things like resawing wide panels, for book matched uh, panels for uh, cabinetry and such. In addition to that though, the bandsaw is also capable of all manner of curve cutting, scroll cuts, compound curve cuts for things like cabriole legs, cutting out perfect circles, and more. And these are all cuts that a table saw could only dream of tackling. But you can own the most expensive bandsaw in the entire world and still only get mediocre performance out of it if it hasn't been set up and tuned correctly. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to mount a new blade, set its tension and tracking, adjust the bandsaw's guides properly, and do a couple of other little tweaks. Everything you'll need to do to get top performance out of your own bandsaw. The first step before changing the blade or making any other adjustment on the bandsaw is of course to unplug the machine. And now is a good time to release the tension on the blade, remove the table locking pin, and also the uh, small round throw plate insert. With the bandsaw's doors open, I can go ahead and uh, carefully wiggle the saw blade off of the wheels and tires, and uh, snake it through the uh, guide post guard, which can be a little tricky since the slot is so narrow. Notice, by the way, that I'm wearing gloves to protect my hands from the sharp teeth of the blade. This is a really good idea. Now, once the blade is released from the guides, I can go ahead and slide it out through the slot in the saw table. Now to store the blade, um, put your foot on the band on the ground and then rotate the band one full turn clockwise. This will fold it over itself essentially into three loops and uh, it's the most compact and easy way to store the blade when it's not in use. Now before proceeding to mount a new saw blade, I always like to vacuum the uh, inside of my bandsaw thoroughly. And this will get sawdust out that uh, doesn't belong there. Um, it's also a good way of getting dust off of the wheels and tires where a buildup of sawdust can actually cause tracking problems uh, for the uh, bandsaw blade. I also vacuum the upper wheel and tire as well as the guide bearings, the motor, and any other spots where dust is built up. Now before installing the new blade, I'm going to back off on the uh, guides, which will make it easier to slide the new blade into place. I'll repeat the same process on the lower guides. Notice that this saw has uh, ball bearing guides instead of the more traditional guide blocks. Now we're ready to uncoil the blade, which basically means um, taking the three loops and kind of throwing them away from yourself uh, until it uh, is a full single band. We're going to make sure that the teeth are running in the correct direction before uh, sliding the blade in through the table slot. Now I'm going to carefully wiggle it in through the slot in the guide post guard and then just loosely set it on the top wheel and now I'll slip the blade onto the lower wheel and tire. 
Okay, before uh, anything else, I'm going to go ahead and uh, release a little bit of the final tension on the blade since I'm fitting a thinner blade than I had on before. Now I'm going to double check that the blade is in place and through the guides, both top and bottom, before coming over and uh, engaging the primary blade tension lever. I'm checking all the while to make sure the blade is going to stay on the tires and wheels. There we go. Now I'm going to rotate it slowly to make sure it's not going to come off the tires either top or bottom. That's all we're going to do with that for now. Yep, everything's good. Now then, uh, I'm going to adjust the final tension. Most saws have some sort of small tension scale that has the uh, width of the blade and uh, an arrow pointing to it. I like to increase the tension a little bit beyond where the, uh, the normal uh, blade width is indicated. Next, I'm going to adjust my blade's tracking. Uh, the adjustment knob and its lock are usually on the side of the saw. I'm going to keep an eye on the blade while rotating the wheel with my finger to make sure that it's riding right in the center of the tire. And then I'll go ahead and lock the setting. Now that our blade is tensioned and in place, I'm going to go ahead and adjust the upper guide assembly. First thing I'm going to do is loosen the two screws that control the forward and back movement of the entire assembly. And I'm going to move this forward until the uh, guide bearings are just behind the blade teeth themselves. I'm going to lock this in place. Next, I'm going to set the position of the rear bearing that the back edge of the blade uh, runs against uh, while uh, a cut is being taken. I'm going to press this assembly forward once it's loosened and uh, bring it in just very loose contact. You might leave a tiny bit of space there, but basically it shouldn't press too hard against the back edge of the blade. And then we're going to lock this in place as well. Now, on to adjusting the, uh, the side uh, guides. Uh, I'm going to slip a uh, post-it note, a little piece of paper, uh, between each side of the blade and its uh, corresponding guide. Now, this procedure would be the same if uh, your bandsaw has the more traditional uh, guide blocks. You do the, exactly the same thing. Now, since these particular uh, guide bearings are mounted eccentrically, uh, all it takes is a little bit of a turn. Now you want to get them in good contact with the blade, but you don't want them to deflect the blade side to side. Once things are there, you can lock that down and remove the paper. And the upper guide assembly is now adjusted. You'll repeat the same process with the lower guide assembly, which is a little more time consuming. Uh, but uh, needs to be done each time you fit a new width of blade. Once all that's done, we can go ahead and replace our throat plate insert. This one takes a little pounding to get into place. And uh, don't forget to replace the table locking pin as well, which keeps the uh, saw table secure. With all adjustments complete, I go ahead and plug the saw in and uh, test it. First, I usually just blip the saw on and off once, just in case the uh, blade suddenly comes off. But since everything seems fine, I go ahead and uh, take one more peek in the uh, tracking window, make sure everything's okay. If you're fitting your saw with a brand new saw blade, it's a great idea to stone the back edges of the blade to round them over a little bit. Here I'm using a medium coarse uh, stone that uh, has no oil on it. Um, this makes a big improvement in the cutting quality of the blade, especially when cutting tight curves. All that's left now is to do a little bit of test cutting. I'm going to lower the guard to within about a quarter inch of the thickness of my stock, lock the uh, post in place, and uh, cut away. 
During this test cut, I'm checking to make sure that the blade is riding correctly on the guides, and if there's any excessive looseness or tightness, this gives me a chance to readjust them before I proceed to do any serious woodworking with the bandsaw.